My name is Andrew Brathwaite, and I'm a supervisor and business development manager with the Microsoft team here at TechData. I'd like to welcome you to today's how-to presentation about Azure Backup, something that uh, a growing number of customers and partners are implementing on Azure. So the phone lines are muted, but as we go along, if you have questions, please ask them by typing in the chat window, and you'll also have an opportunity to ask questions at the end. All right. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Hello and uh, welcome everyone to this information session on Azure. Uh, my name is Girish Sharma and I'm the technical specialist uh, for Azure at Tech Data. The idea behind today's session and the topic is Azure Backup Services and uh, hopefully by the end of the session we'll have a little bit better understanding of how Azure Backup Service work. We'll also go through what are the different options involved in deployment of Azure Backup Services. Uh, I have a demo also set up and uh, hopefully I will be able to show you some of the steps involved in deployment of Azure Backup and uh, what are the case scenarios you can use it. And uh, in the end, we'll also look at the pricing calculator because a lot of people, they want to know, you know, how much is the pricing uh, for this uh, services uh, from Azure. So on the screen, you can see my email address. So in case you have any question, maybe later on, or maybe if I'm not able to uh, answer your question, I can definitely get back to you. But please use this email address and uh, note that, note that. Uh, in case you have any question on Azure Backup Services, you can also reach me on this email for sure. So let's get started. And uh, we'll start with the backup solution and how it has evolved in the last uh, decade or so. More or less, it has to do with the IT infrastructure, which has changed over the last 10 or 20 years. Uh, previously, it used to be only the physical server that used to be backed up. But now with the introduction of hypervisor, whether it's Hyper-V, VMware, or Citrix, we have our important application as well as databases running on the virtual machine. So it's very important that we have a solution which we can protect. A lot of customers also have the hybrid sort of solution, which is a mix of physical, virtual, and they also have their some infrastructure in the cloud. And now with the uh, public cloud getting more popular, uh, we see a lot of people, they're moving their infrastructure from on-prem to the cloud. But the important thing is that when we talk about backup solution, we need a solution which can cater to all these different kind of environment, whether it's a physical, virtual, on-prem, hybrid, or cloud sort of environment, you need a one management console which should be able to cater to all the requirement. Now, there are a lot of vendors in the in the market. Some of them, they specialize only in the virtual space. Some of them only in the physical space. Some of they have the cloud capability, but there are very few options available right now when it comes to backup and restore that from one management console or one single pane, you're able to back up and restore your workloads, which is scattered across various environment. And that is what Azure Backup Server will try to solve. Now, Azure uh, is one of the biggest public cloud vendor available as we speak right now. So as you can see on the screen, uh, we have a uh, wide reach when it comes to regions available. In Canada, if I talk about, we have two regions. One is in Toronto and the other one is Ottawa City. With, and uh, in US, we have a wide presence uh, available right from east to west coast. We have one region in South America, which is in Brazil. Uh, we also have a wide coverage in Europe and uh, as well as in Asia Pacific, which includes India, China, Japan, Singapore and Hong Kong, and we have also added the uh, two data centers in the Down Under, which is in Australia, one in Victoria and the other in New South Wales. And last week, we added two regions, which is not on this slide, which is in Africa. I think it is one in Johannesburg and the other one is Cape Town. So you can see that in case you want to deploy these services, you have uh, all these options available, which are place you want to deploy or whatever your customers want. And with the GDPR coming specifically for the European Union, 
uh, you want to make sure that your data is in within the EU. So we have a lot of options available within East and Western Europe, so you can deploy all those resources within these data centers also. So what Azure Backup Server can do and what kind of workloads they can protect. So as you can see on the screen, Azure Backup Server specializes in uh, protecting most important Microsoft workloads such as Exchange, SharePoint, and SQL. You can use it to protect your hypervisors and virtual machines running on that, whether it's a Hyper-V or VMware. We can protect both physical as well as virtual machine, your important Windows servers starting from 2008, 2012, and the most recently added 2016. And we can also protect your Linux machine, whether it's running on VM or on a physical. So what we are trying to solve with Azure Backup Services is that we are trying to provide a cost-effective and cost-efficient way of protecting your workload and also moving the data from on-prem to the cloud. Uh, not only you can back up your file and folder, we also back up your application away databases and workloads. We provide some built-in capability, uh, which includes uh, network throttling as well as compression, and it is highly scalable, so you don't need to spend uh, on the storage upfront. It is highly scalable, as you know that you pay as you go, nothing, no upfront cost. That is one of the hallmark of using Azure uh, backup services and uh, it reduces your dependency on your offsite backup and as well as you accelerate your recovery time with fast restore. You can use this Azure backup services to backup locally and create a copy in the Azure cloud if you're doing uh, deploying that in on prem or you can use it uh, the blob storage which is in the Azure. So as I mentioned that there are a lot of customers uh, who are using uh, other option, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud for backing up and restore. I just want to throw this uh, webinar is on Azure Backup Server, but uh, I know that a lot of customers, they prefer using their own uh, backup solution, whether it's from Veeam, Veritas, or Commvault. And all of these companies, they have provided special cloud connectors to be compatible with the Azure. Uh, you don't need to spend a lot of money nowadays on the tape infrastructure because there's a lot of human intervention is involved. Uh, tape uh, truck coming to your location, you're backing up on a tape drive and then it's going off-site and you're vaulting in an off-site location. So there's a lot of cost and a lot of human intervention is involved. So in case you want to use any of the separate vendors that I, that I said and there are a lot of other options also available, if you just want to use the Azure storage, you can do that too, but definitely with the Azure Backup Services, you can completely remove your tape infrastructure and it saves a lot, lot of money to the end user as well as the partners. So all those capabilities are available right now as we speak. So let's look at some of the deployment models which are available right now in the Azure. The first one is the file and folder backup. Now this is the data which is static and the data which is not changing. So all these file and folder which are on the workstation, whether it's a Windows Server 20, 2008, 2012, or 2016, or it's in a client machine, whether it's Windows 7, 8, or 10, you can use file and folder backup from Azure. So what does that involve is basically you deploy the agent and you target that to the recovery service vault, which I will show you in the demo how to create that and you run the backup uh, by using this agent. That is what is uh, available via the file and folder, uh, via the Azure backup agent, which can be deployed on-prem or if you have the infrastructure in the cloud, it can be used in both the scenarios. The other option is the backing up of your application and services. So as you can see on the screen, whether it's your specialized workload, which includes the Exchange, SharePoint, SQL, or the data which is changing. So this you can do it with Azure Backup Server or the DPM, what you call Data Protection Manager, which is part of the uh, System Center Suite. So you can use both these uh, option to back up your application SQL Exchange, whether it's a virtual machine or a physical machine running on Hyper-V or VMware, 
and obviously you can also use this to uh, back up your final fold or the data which is static or which is not changing. Uh, in order to use that, you need to have a Azure backup server which is uh, deployed on-prem. It can be deployed on a physical machine or on a virtual machine and you can use this and you can deploy the agents on the machine that you're trying to protect, any Windows server or Windows client machine running any kind of application or database and you can create a copy on-prem and you can create a secondary copy in the Azure cloud if you're using it on-prem or if you're using uh, or deploying Azure backup server in the cloud, you can deploy that and uh, you can use the cloud storage for backing that up. So in simple word, Azure Backup Server is give you all the functionality of a data protection manager. The only difference from the DPM is that uh, you don't get the option of tape drive. Uh, so as you can see on the screen, Azure Backup Server is very similar to the DPM. All the functionalities are there. Uh, you don't get the option of tape backing up to the tape, but you can back up locally on a on a disk-based storage, and then you can uh, also use the Azure storage for your long time retention. And this is specifically designed for the SMB marketplace because we recognize that uh, the price is very important and uh, that is what we are trying to provide with the introduction of Azure Backup Services. Well, let's look at, at how does the Azure Backup Server work. So, the first thing that you have to do is that you need to have an active Azure subscription. So you go to the Azure portal and you create your subscription. And the second step is to create the recovery service vault. And when you create the recovery service vault, you can deploy this Azure backup server on a physical machine or a virtual machine. It has to be a 2012 R2 data center or a standard edition. And this can be used to backup your virtual machine or physical machine, which I mentioned in the previous slide. Now, along with this, you need to download the recovery service vault credential and you need to register your Azure backup server. It's just a one-click download and uh, when you register and configure your Azure backup server and register with the Azure portal, then you can run your backup. The backups are fully encrypted. It is fully compressed so to make sure that uh, uh, there is no data loss. We know that security is very important so we provide 256-bit encryption for our customers to make sure that it's fully secured. And then when it comes to recovery, you can uh, restore this to your original location or you wanna use it to, or you want to recover this to a different server, you can do that too. So all those functionalities are available uh, as of now. So let me just quickly show you what are the different steps involved. I'm gonna flip over to my demo environment. So I'm on my data center, so as you can see that I have two server running, these are on-prem, so I have the data center with the name DC1, and I have the tech data AB, which is the tech data Azure backup server, that is the uh, name of my Azure backup server. So the first thing you have to do is you will go to your Azure portal, so as you can see that I'm logged in with my credential. The first thing you have to create is a recovery service vault. So if you don't see recovery service vault on the left pane, so what you have to do is you will go to more services and in the filter you can type recovery service vault and recovery service vault will appear. You'll click on this. I've already created one recovery service vault, but if you're creating for the first time, you will go to the add button on plus and you will click on that and there'll be a new uh, window which will open and we'll give a name over here. Let's, so let's give the name let's give the name TD demo and the subscription I will use is pay as you go. Now a resource group I have already created one so I will use the same one but if you're creating for the first time you will select the create no new button and in the location you can choose so as i mentioned there are different regions which are available so i can use any of these regions to deploy my recovery service vault 
So let's deploy this in say Canada East and you click on the create button. So the deployment is in progress. So if I expand my notification, you can see that the resource group was deployed successfully. So let me come out of this and I'll refresh. So you can see the TD demo uh, recovery service vault was created successfully. So let me click on this and expand this. So the first step is created. So the first step in installing the Azure Backup so is to create the recovery service vault after you create your, uh, after you log into the Azure portal. And then under the getting started, we'll go to the backup. And then we have to create the infrastructure. So in the backup goal, you will select where is your workload running. So in my case, it is running on-prem. And what do you want to backup? So as I told you, there are two kinds of backup you can do. One is the file and folder backup, and the other one is the application consistent backup. So if you're doing the file and folder backup, you'll select file and folder, and you'll select on OK. And as I mentioned, to do the file and folder backup, you need to download the agent. So you will download the agent and deploy on the machine that you want to uh, protect the files and folder. It can be a Windows Server or, uh, or even a client machine. And you will download this agent on that one. And along with this, you also have to download the uh, vault credential because you need to register that. But I'm not going to download this, but uh, this is a step you have to follow when it comes to file and folder if you want to uh, backup. So this is the first option which is available. So let me just quickly show you the other option also, uh, which includes the application backup. So in case you want to backup the system state, your SQL, Active Directory, Exchange, all those things. So you will follow the same procedure. So you will create your recovery service vault and after the recovery service vault is created, you will go to the getting started button and under that backup, and then you will create your backup infrastructure. And uh, again, it is running on-prem, so you can choose whichever if it's running in Azure or it's on-prem, in this case, it is running on-prem. And now I will select, say, Hyper-V virtual machine or anything, system state, and I will click on the OK button. And as you can see now, you have the option of installing the Microsoft Azure Backup Server download. So this is the uh, uh, management console which will be provided to us. So you need to click on the download button and it will take you to the Microsoft website. So if I scroll down, I will click on the download button and you need to download all these files in order to deploy the Azure Backup Server. And uh, if I select the file name, it gives me all the option and you gotta make sure that you have this much space available on the machine that you're trying to deploy. And uh, after you have deployed uh, the Azure Backup Server, let me just close this because I'm not gonna do that, it's gonna take some time. So let me just close this. And the same thing, the way we did in the file and folder backup, you also need to download the vault credential and it expires after two days. So make sure that after you have downloaded, you register your Azure backup server with these vault credentials. That is how the Azure backup server talks to the Azure. So after you have done that, let me flip over to my Azure backup server, which is TDAB or Tech Data Azure backup server. So after you have downloaded the uh, Azure Backup Server executive, executable files, you'll be provided with two uh, icons. So the bottom one is the PowerShell. So if you want to manage your Azure Backup Server via the PowerShell commands, you can use this. And the other one is the GUI interface, which will give you uh, the GUI-based interface to manage your Azure Backup Server. So let me just open this. domain is sherma.com so I'm look I'm uh, logging in as an administrator so let me open the user interface so 
The first time when you open the uh, Azure Backup Server, you'll be provided with this user interface. So I'm under the Management Console. So as you can see that I have added a disk pool, which is almost 60 gig, which is locally attached to uh, this uh, Azure Backup Server. And I've also uh, deployed the agent on the machine which I'm trying to protect, which is DC or Domain Controller in this case. But if you're doing this for the first time, you'll go to the Management and you'll go to the Disk and you will click on the add button and from here you will add whatever disk or the destination you want to use for local backup in my case i've already added so i'll come out of this so after you have added the storage pool uh, the second thing you have to do is to deploy the agent on the machine that you have to trying to protect so you will highlight agent and you will select the install button and then you'll be provided with uh, one wizard which you have to follow in which I will install agent and uh, uh, under that because it's part of the domain and yes I forgot to mention one thing that uh, your Azure backup server should be part of the domain it should be a member machine so after you reach this window it will populate all the machines which are there and then you have to provide the credentials so you make sure that you have all the credentials to uh, add all the computers within the Azure backup server and after you have done that the agent will be installed on your machine and it will show you the agent status as OK. So this is the way you will uh, create the storage pool as well as deploy the agent and uh, after you have done that the second step you can do is you will go to the protection and you have to create a protection group. So as you can see that I have already created one protection group for my domain controller but if you're doing for the first time you will click on the new button and again you'll be provided with a visit and you will follow the visit let me go next so depending upon what kind of machine you're trying to protect whether it's a client machine like Windows 7 8 or 10 you will select client if it's a server obviously you will select the server and uh, here you will select what you're trying to protect so if you can see that in my domain controller I can drill down to my C drive all the way to my system protection and if I want to even back up my system state which is Active Directory I can do that and uh, I'll go next here you can provide the name for your protection group so as you can see for your short term protection it is using the locally attached disk which I configured and uh, you have online protection which is in the Azure uh, you can use then you will select next uh, now these are the things that uh, you can configure I'm not gonna go through these are the retentions you know for how long you want so let me just quickly follow the visit and just select the data source you want to protect online so it is my system state active directory select next schedule a backup every which uh, the lot of options are available right now so you can uh, schedule depending upon uh, how you want to schedule your backup you can automatically do it over the network or you can do offline backup so basically in case your backup sets is very large and it's going to take a long time so what you can do is uh, you can back this up on a, on an external hard drive. You can you you can ship this to the Microsoft data center. That is what is the offline backup. But if it is not big of a file, you can do it over the network too. And you will hit on the create group, and uh, your protection group is up and running. So this is and then you have uh, some other options so you have also the monitoring tab available uh, which you can go through then you can also have for the reporting in which you can uh, uh, send email alerts to you if the backup was uh, performed successfully so you have all the options so it's it's very user friendly which you can explore but this is a brief overview of your user interface and how you can deploy that onto the uh, on-prem. Uh, on any 2012 R2 data center or standard edition.
okay so the other important question which comes up is the is the pricing basically so it is very important that uh, we understand how the pricing in the Azure uh, basically works so the Azure backup pricing it works on the number of instances that you're trying to protect and also depend upon the size of the instance. So say for example, if you have a physical server which you're trying to protect, you'll be needing one, one instance for that and uh, it will also depend upon how big is the instance that you're trying to protect. So anything which is less than 50 gig, you're paying $6 some change uh, for protecting that within the Azure backup services. If it is between 51 to 500 gig, you're paying around $12.16 and anything above 500 will be increment of $12.16. So basically it depends upon uh, the number of instances and the size of the instance that you're trying to protect. That is how you do the uh, pricing for the Azure backup. And uh, then obviously there is a cost for the Azure storage. So it can be a locally redundant or a geo redundant. So if you've been using Azure, you know that uh, Azure has the option of using LRS or GRS. So in LRS, in one data center, you will have three copies, which is around about roughly close to uh, 0 0.03 per gig, uh, 0 0.03 gig per month. And if you're using the GRS option, which is globally redundant storage, which allows you to have uh, six copies, three copies per region uh, uh, for redundancy and the cost of that one is 0 0.06 GB per month. So this is how much is the cost uh, uh, of the Azure backup services. So it depends upon the instances that you're trying to protect and also what is the size of the instance and if you're using the Azure storage it will depend upon uh, you're using the LRS or the GRS and the cost is right in front. So you can also uh, go to the pricing calculator which is available uh, uh, on the internet. So if I can actually go over here. So I'm on the Azure uh, portal and I'm under the pricing. So, so say if I'm trying to protect one instance and the amount of gig that I have on that one is say 50 gigs. So as you can see that the cost will be $6.08 dollar per month. If I increase my instance uh, to 2, so it will be $12.16. So that is how the pricing in the Azure backup will work. And if I increase this to say 51, so it will be $12.16. So uh, as I said that it will depend upon the instance and the size of the instance. And if I go above 500 gig, then it will be increment of $12.16. And also, as I said that, you need to pay for the Azure storage. So you can see if I have one gig on the Azure storage, it, it is roughly 0 0.03 uh, per gig per month. If it is locally written in storage, if I change it to the GRS, it is going to be 0 0.06 gig per month. So that is basically how you will uh, price the, in case you want to deploy your Azure backup services on-prem or whether it's in the cloud. So with this, I will open this for the question. So if anybody has any question, I'll be more than happy to answer that. Hello. Hi, Garish. One question came into the Q&A, and it, the question is, the Office backup would only need to be done once, send external disk to Microsoft the very first time, and then after that, do online. I'm sorry, I, I didn't get, you can repeat that? Yeah, the Office backup would only need to be done once, send external disk to Microsoft the very first time, and then afterwards, do you do it online? Yeah, so basically if it, it is for the large instances. So you know that if you're sending a large chunk of data uh, through the wire, it's gonna take uh, like long time. So yes, to answer that, you will do it only for the first first time. So it's what you call the seeding of the data. So once the data is there in the, in the Azure storage, after that you can do just the incremental backups, yeah.
any other question? I don't have anything else coming through to the Q&A. Okay. Uh, I also want to share some resources over here, you know, in case uh, you want to learn more about Azure Backup Services. So we have uh, all these resources available, which is uh, available, generally available. So I think, uh, Relitsa, you will share these uh, links with the, with, the, with the partners, I believe. You can share that, right? Yes, I will. Okay. So all these options are available. So if you want to learn more about the Azure Backup Services, you can go, you can subscribe to the channel line also. There are a lot of useful videos you can go through. And obviously if you have any question, uh, you can reach out to me. My email address is uh, there, which I showed in the initially. You can always reach out to me for any question on Azure Backup Services. Um, one more question came in, and the question is, when do I need to deploy the Azure Backup Server? If I do, does the backup go to that server, then the cloud? Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> can you repeat that? Sorry, when do I need to deploy the Azure Backup Server? If I do, does the backup go to, to that server and then to the cloud? Yeah, so when you want to deploy, so the reason you will deploy the Azure Backup Server is in case you're trying to uh, protect the uh, application, right? So if you want to protect workloads such as, uh, you know, Active Directory, which I showed in the demo, System State, Exchange, SQL, in that case, you'll need an Azure Backup Server because the other option, which is a file and folder, it cannot do the application aware, the data which is changing, which is generally with Exchange or, SQL databases. So in case you're protecting these kind of workloads, so it depends upon like your, your environment. So if you're talking about only file and folder backup, you don't need to deploy the Azure Backup Server. If you have in, in your environment all these application database running, then you need to deploy the Azure Backup Server. I hope it answered their question. Um, there's another question, and is um, do you receive receive notice notification by email of successful or failed backups? Yes. So under the under the monitoring uh, under the reporting tab, you can add the email, and uh, whenever there is a uh, successful or any failure, it can send the email alerts to you that email that you have provided with the Azure port, uh, within the Azure Backup Server. Yeah. So yeah, it can be done. Do you need a backup server to backup locally? So, uh, so if I understand this, you're saying that, do I need an Azure backup server to backup? So I believe they're talking about their environment is running on-prem. So do you need an Azure backup server to backup locally? So the answer to that is yes or no. So as I said, again, it depends upon what kind of workload you're trying to protect. So if you're talking about just to protect your file and folder, so I can just deploy the agent on that one and uh, send the data to, to, uh, to Azure storage. But if you're trying to protect the workloads, which is on-prem, so you want to make sure that, you know, uh, your uh, backups are closer to your uh, 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 running server. So in that case, yes, you will be needing the Azure backup server because Obviously, the recovery can take some time. Otherwise, if you don't have your uh, backups closer to your environment. So for your applications, yes, I would recommend you deploy the Azure Backup Server on-prem. The next question is, is it necessary to add security on the Microsoft side of the cloud, like virtual firewall? So the not really. So the data is encrypted. Uh, so it, it is fully secured. Azure uses a 256-bit encryption, so it creates a secure socket layer. So you don't need to add any firewall in that case. If you're sending the data from on-prem to the cloud, it is fully encrypted. We know security is very important, so that is all provided with the Azure Backup Service. You're not paying anything specifically for that encryption part.
And the next question is, how would the billing be done through big data? Good question. Uh, Mr. Andrew, can you answer that please for me? Sure, so billing is uh, based on an assumption. So uh, we're as you're concerned, uh, uh, you would get uh, the partner, you would get the invoice uh, on the 30th or 31st of the month. Our billing cycle is actually the 20th of the month until the 19th. And that's irrespective of whether it's Azure or, or 365 or anything like that. Um, so when our billing cycle is done, we get that information together and we send the invoices out to our partners by the 30th or the month of the 31st. And it's based on consumption of that billing period that just ended. Thanks, Andrew. And the next question uh, sort of ties into the previous one. Um, the question is, is there a flex rate available for, and what happens if the backup changes in size? Sorry, I didn't get the last line. What you said? Can you repeat that, please? Is there a flex rate of available and what happens if the backup changes in size? Flex rate available. Uh, Andrew, do you know anything with the flex rate or anything? Uh, I'm not sure about that. Yeah, I'm not aware of any flex rate. Uh, I don't know if there's any promotion uh, comes up, and obviously, if there's any promotion, that would be communicated. Uh, but the but the pricing which I showed you, that is how you will price. And uh, is there any promotion, if any, going on? That will be obviously communicated to the to the partners. Yeah. We have one more question, and it is, do you need the Azure Backup Server to back up all VMs? To back up all VMs? Whole. Whole VMs. So when you say whole VMs, I don't know, uh, they need to elaborate. So if you're talking about, as I said, file and folder, uh, you don't need an Azure Backup Server for that. You can just deploy the agent on that. And, uh, but, uh, as far as I understand, if you're talking about backing up your VMs, and if they're running any databases on that one, then you need an Azure backup server. But if you're talking about just file and yeah. folders, you can just you can just deploy the agent. You don't need Azure backup server for that. No, he means the the VM in its entirety. So uh, again, as I said, it depends what what. What are you running? So if you're running system states and everything, then I'll, then you need the Azure Backup Server for that. Yeah. Are you able to do a demo? Demo for? How to back up a VM and restore a VM? Uh, the machines that I'm running is not, uh, you know, they're not uh, optimum to run those ones. So unfortunately, I can't show you because it's going to take a long time. These machines that I'm running right now is only like uh, two gig, and uh, they they won't fit into this, you know, this window. So uh, I'd love to show you, but can't show on these machines, unfortunately. Any other question? Uh, there's one more question. And the question is, how can the information be shared with the end user but managed by the partner without giving too much control? Uh, so within the Azure portal, you can, uh, is uh, Andrew, uh, just to confirm, do we do anything via the stream one in which they create the tenants? And uh, how does the stream one helps in that case? So when, when the partner would go into the portal, uh, unless they give access to the end customer, the end customer wouldn't have, wouldn't be able to do anything. Right. Yeah. So, actually, let well, me that, just. That's secure, subject to what access the partner chooses to give to the end customer. Right. So, just to show you on the 
on the Azure portal, you know, there are there are different options available and uh, how much, what kind of permission you want to give. So let me actually show you if I am. So you can see that you can give the access control to them and uh, you can add over here and depending upon what kind of role you want to uh, you want to give you can specify over here like owner contributor uh, owner has full access on that the contributor can manage everything except access to the resources a reader can only view everything but cannot make any changes so these all things can be can be provisioned via the Azure portal yeah, that's a, that's Naturally, that's a conversation that uh, the partner would have with the end customer. If right. The end customer just wants to wash their hands of all of it and just basically say, you know, no, you're the partner, you do all this and uh, manage it for us. Yes. That's one conversation. If it's an end customer that actually wants, for example, reader access to see or just wants to be able to look over your shoulder, so to speak. Yeah. Then, you know, uh, this is where you would be able to uh, do those assignments. Right, yeah. So all these access controls I have labeled, as you can see, there's a whole list like backup contributor, backup operator, reader. So all these options, log analytic contributor, monitoring contributor. So there are a lot of options available and you can specify what kind of role you want to give to that individual person. The fo there's a follow-up question to a previous one, um, and it, he, Paul is asking if the ownership is uh, to the partner. So if I, if I think if you're in the owner, so that the owner will be the partner, I think in this case, so they have the full complete control. So yeah, the partner is the one which completes control, all the subscriptions and everything in that case, if you're the owner. Is the client not able to change the partner? Uh, good question. I'm not sure. Well, the client, I mean, the client always, I guess, has the option to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not something that they would go into Azure to do. They would. To answer the question, the short answer is yes. But that's not a function of going to Azure to make those changes. That's something that they would discuss with partner if that they decide they want to work with whoever that new partner is. So as an example, if you encounter a customer that says, you know what, they want to work with you uh, instead of who they have been working with up until now, then it's for them to uh, have you create uh, an instance for them and they would have to cancel um, the instance that they have with their uh, soon to be former One more question. Um, when the other calculator is used, is that the price that the reseller should be quoting? Yeah, uh, that's, that's, yes, that, that's, uh, that would be in Canadian dollars. Obviously, it's important to make sure that you uh, select Canadian dollars uh, anytime you're using the pricing calculator. But that is what you quote to your end customer. Uh, it's, a, it's a value that you can obviously mark up, build in your additional services or uh, any other uh, costs that you think are appropriate to the quote. Um, but uh, again, short answer is yes. That's all the questions that I have for the Q&A. Okay, so uh, any 
other thoughts, Girish? Or? Uh, not really. So as I said, as I said again, that you know the links that I have provided, which Vilips are going to share that. So there's a lot of information which is there, and uh, partners they can go there and uh, train themselves. Uh, we will be adding more features in the in the coming releases. We will keep to update the Azure backup services because this is specifically targeted for the SMB. The price is great and uh, it, it resonates with a lot of customers. You know, they want to have the option uh, to back up locally and uh, as an extension, they want to have a written, uh, they want to have a secondary copy in the cloud. So all those functionalities are available within the Azure backup services. And if you have a Windows centric environment, and I will emphasize on that, if you're running Exchange, Active Directory, all those SQLs. So it is the Microsoft which has created. So we know that in and out. So you can all those backup and restore. You can do as we speak today with Azure Backup Services. And also, if you think that uh, you want to still use any other vendor for back backup services, you're more than welcome to use that one. We'll always provide you with a uh, Azure Storage if you want to use it as a secondary copy. You don't need to spend money on those tape library. I know it costs a lot, the offsite storage. So you can use the plugins from all these companies, and you you can utilize these features uh, within the within the uh, Azure region. And we have a uh, uh, wide coverage available throughout the globe, as I said, in Canadian data centers, Americas, European Union with the GDPR coming now, which is less than a year away. So all these functionalities uh, make uh, Azure and place them in a unique situation to unlock all these options which are available as we speak today. And uh, as I said, people who are not able to ask any question or maybe if you're not able to answer it correctly, you can always reach me on this email address. Uh, I will get back to you. If I don't know the answer, I'll make sure that you get the right answer uh, and uh, we'll get the solution for you. Okay. Just a couple of uh, house cleaning uh, things before uh, we close things off uh, finally. Uh, looking forward to working closely with you. Have you had a chance if uh, this is your first uh, encounter with Girish? And so for technical discussions, we have an in-house uh, resource that belongs to us, Tech Data, that's uh, well-versed on uh, Azure and continuing to uh, uh, learn more because uh, Azure is quite huge. And if you ever encounter anyone that says they know Azure inside out or perfectly, look at them with a Spockian eyebrow because things are always changing. And uh, we're fortunate to have someone who is uh, uh, up-to-date and current and, and on the what's happening with our, uh, Azure today and uh, what's on the horizon. So uh, please call us and leverage him as much as you need to to help you grow your Azure business. Now, uh, a couple of things as well, as far as uh, offers and incentives, uh, we do have an Azure Jumpstart incentive that's in effect until the end of June. So hopefully you've been having some Azure discussions with uh, one or multiple customers this is something that uh, you might want to take advantage of. You can give us a call. We can provide you some more details on it. But basically, it gives you an opportunity to earn a $250 credit on account of your first Azure subscription activated through CSP. And the value of that subscription has to be at least $250 Canadian or higher. So that is the quick overview of that, a chance for you to earn some money in and above uh, what uh, you would uh, present to your end customer for an Azure subscription. And again, that's for the first Azure subscription that you activate if you haven't done so already. Post-sales technical support, always key and always important to any uh, solution that uh, you sell. And we do have Azure post-sales support, uh, which is exclusive for tech data. And uh, there is a uh, phone number and email address that uh, we can share so that when you do uh, uh, provision and deploy uh, Azure subscription for your end customer. Uh, there is something in place, and it is free of charge, this service, up until the end of June. That is the offer that's uh, been in effect for a couple of months now, and uh, that's uh, coming up to its end at the end of this month. Uh, and we'll see what we can do to uh, extend
extend that or if it's not to be extended, uh, see what else we can put in place to um, keep that uh, going in some fashion. And I guess the last thing that I want to mention at this time, or last couple of things, uh, health check. Assessments when it comes to Azure are of great value. And I would just encourage you to uh, consider that as a part of your discussion plan with your end customer, especially if they're net new to Azure or to an Azure solution, uh, just to find out exactly how ready they are for a cloud solution <coughs> or something like Azure. So Azure Health Check, that's an offer currently in place where uh, you receive a free Azure Health Check for your end customer that will <coughs> help you to assess and plan their ramp into the cloud. Uh, there is a SKU that's in place for that, so it's something we can talk to you a little bit more about as well. That offer is coming to an end at the end of this month, June. And the last piece, migration services. If you already are efficient at migrating customers from on-prem to the cloud, great. If not, we offer something that you can take advantage of, or maybe you want you don't want to use your uh, migration expertise for this because maybe you have larger projects and you don't, don't want to be stretched thin. Azure Migration Services exists with that data and um, it's a free service that uh, you can take advantage of. So those are things that I wanted to bring to your attention, some things to think about, and uh, you can contact the Microsoft team here at Tech Data for more information. All right. Thanks very much, everybody, for attending. <coughs> I encourage you to reach out to Tech Data over the next day or so with uh, additional questions that you might have, our email address is microsoft at techdata.ca. Send us an email, we'll be happy to reply, and uh, again, remember that Gurish, our technical specialist, is available to you. So that's it. That's all. Thanks once again. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you, everyone.